A 2.3 kilogram sphere with a radius of 0.08 meters is released at the top of a hill as shown. The sphere rolls without slipping, so loss can be neglected, and reaches the bottom of the hill with a speed of 1.8 meters per second. The moment of inertia of any sphere is I equals 2 thirds m r squared. All right, so this is an energy problem. So let's go ahead and start actually by identifying the energies that we have at each time. So at the start, ball is elevated above the reference level, and so we're going to have gravitational potential energy, or GPE. The formula for GPE is M times G, which I'm, we're using 10 meters per second squared. You might be using 9.81 H. Now at the bottom of the ramp, ball is moving, so we're going to have kinetic energy, whose formula is written above, 1 half mv squared, so I'm going to write m and v here, and we're going to have rotational kinetic energy. So in previous problems, in the energy unit, we saw like a cart rolling down the hill, but in this case, we can't neglect this rotational energy because this whole ball is, is rolling, and the equation for rotational kinetic energy is very similar except instead of mass, we use moment of inertia, and instead of velocity, we use angular velocity, which we use omega for. All right, so let's go ahead and start filling out some given. I'm gonna switch pens. So we have a 2.3 kilogram sphere. I'm gonna put that down as my mass. In both cases. And then this radius of 0 0.08 meters, I'm gonna need this in just a second. So the radius is 0 0.08. And at the bottom of the hill, the speed of 1.8 meters per second, that's going to be my velocity. Remember that um, angular speed would be in radians per second. All right, so let's go ahead and start answering some of these questions. This is what is the sphere's moment of inertia? And we can use this equation that it gave us that I equals two thirds mr squared. So going ahead and plugging that in, the mass is 2.3 for me, and the radius was 0 0.08. And I get 0 0.00981. And the units on that are going to be the units of mass and the units of radius, which are meters squared. So kilogram meters squared. All right. And I can also write that in because we're going to take that into account in our RKE, rotational kinetic energy. All right, so then it says, what is the sphere's rotational speed at the bottom? So this is our equation for rotational or angular speed, where we're just going to take that regular speed and divide it by the radius. So that velocity was 1.8. I'm dividing by 0 0.08, and I get 22.5. And since it's angular speed, it's not going to be um, meters per second. It's going to be radians per second. Then it says, what is the sphere's maximum rotational kinetic energy? So that rotational kinetic energy right there, I just found my rotational velocity. So I can do one half the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared. And I get 2.48. And this will be, since it's energy, it's still going to be joules. All right, then it asks for the translational kinetic energy. Now I can just use, so I've just used my RK equation. Now I can use just the regular kinetic energy equation. So 1 half times the mass times the velocity squared. And I get 3.73. Joules, which is the next answer. All right, so let's go ahead and start answering this part. So initially, we had gravitational potential energy due to the elevation. And since the ball was just released, 
it wasn't pushed by anything, there's not going to be any work done by external um, forces, so we're going to put none. It told us we can neglect the loss, so we can put none in zero joules for both of these. And then at the final time, we have Ke and Rke, because the ball is moving um, down the ramp and is also spinning. Units, of course, will be joules for all of the energies. All right, so then we had 3.73 joules as our kinetic energy and 2.48. So we're going to combine these two together. And that gives me 6.21. But since I didn't add any energy and I didn't lose any energy, then I must have had 6.21 joules of GPE at the start. The GPE equation is m times g times h, so to find the height, I can just take GPE and divide by the mass and the gravitational acceleration. Make sure you put parentheses there. And I get 0 0.27 meters as the height the sphere was dropped from.